Hello class, and welcome to your second lecture. Um, this is entitled DNA Replication. As with the last one, you'll need a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, some kind of writing utensil because you'll be taking notes throughout this whole lecture. Remember, you can pause, stop, or rewind the lecture as you need. You can watch half of it um, now, half of it later quarter of it now, three quarters of it later, whatever you wish, right? Go at your own pace. So, we're going to start it off, DNA replication. The objective, which I want you to put at the top of your notes, students will be able to analyze DNA replication in order to describe the structures and steps of DNA replication. So, your look-fors in this video are the structures and steps of DNA replication, which you'll be able to describe afterward. Okay. So, whenever a cell splits or does something called mitosis, which we'll talk about later, it must replicate or copy its DNA so that the two new cells can have the same amount of DNA as the original cell. Let's talk about DNA and chromosomes. When it when a, when a cell copies, the DNA goes through a complex process of shrinking itself down to fit in the nucleus. So each human cell has one meter of DNA in the nucleus. And remember, the nucleus is the brain of the cell. It's an organelle within that tiny, 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 tiny little cell. So the nucleus is even smaller. And somehow, there's a meter of DNA in the nucleus. So DNA is quite complex. And what we're going to learn about is a very simplified version of DNA replication. So, before it shrinks, during most of the time, DNA is packaged in very tightly bound packages called chromosomes. Here's a chromosome. Chromosome is this entire X-like structure. Okay, we zoom in here. This mess of things is actually not DNA yet. It is chromatin which you've seen that word um, on many other things as we talked about the nucleus and other cell organelles, chromatin, okay? So, there is a difference between prokaryote and eukaryote chromosomes. Prokaryote, remember, prokaryotes do not have a nucleus. They have only one circular chromosome in the cytoplasm. Eukaryotes have more than one chromosome in the nucleus. Humans have 46 chromosomes. So while the eukaryote chromosome looks like this, the prokaryote chromosome is circular. All right? So prokaryote, this is a bacteria cell. You'll see this entire blue strand in the middle. That is one chromosome in a prokaryote. Okay? And these are the bases we talked about in our last lecture. C, G, and A, T. Right. In the eukaryote cell, the chromosome is an X. Okay. So prokaryote, that O you can think of as one long circular strand, and the eukaryote is an X. Okay. So how are chromosomes created? Well, first, DNA strands wind up around proteins called histones. This entire thing, the histone is kind of like a ball and the DNA like a string. So if you were to wind a piece of string around a ball, that structure is called a nucleosome. From there, the nucleosomes coil into supercoils called chromatin. And then the chromatin is coiled up tightly to make chromosomes. Okay, so here's a picture. We can start with our DNA, our double helix. Remember, we have our ladder in the, in the middle. And along the side here, we have our phosphate groups and sugars. This is a simplified version of DNA. And then we have it coil into that double helix all the way down here. And then as it goes through the process, that DNA coils around our histones, which are these pink protein molecules here. Okay, This entire ball with the strings around it, the strands of DNA, 
and the protein, the entire ball is called a nucleosome. From the nucleosome, it gets smaller and smaller and coils into a chromatin. And then that chromatin all together forms a chromosome. All right, just a reminder, this is DNA, double helix. So if we break it down, we start out with our DNA. These strands are what is going to coil around the histone. So that blue strand here coils around our singular histones. And this right here is a nucleosome. Here now we can see our nucleosome, which starts to get tightly packed in these coils. These coils. And you remember where we're going next? Our supercoils are called chromatin. And from chromatin, we make the chromosome, the X. So, DNA replication, we actually work backwards. The chromosomes unwind all the way back to strands of double-stranded DNA. Okay, so we actually work backwards from the chromosome to the chromatin to the, what was before chromosome, chromatin, nucleosome to the histone to the DNA. Okay, so that's step one. It unwinds. Chromosomes unwind all the way into these double stranded DNA. Step two, we have an enzyme called helicase that comes in and separates the DNA into two separate single strands. Kind of like taking a, a zipper on a jacket. So if you think about when your jacket is zippered all the way up to your chin in that really cold weather, your zipper undoes those two strands. So that zipper is the helicase comes in and it separates it into single strands. Our third step, the enzyme DNA polymerase, comes in and adds correct nitrogen base to each strand, it makes all the matches to make them two double-stranded DNA that are identical to the original one. Okay. So visually, we have a helicase that's already come through and separated this into two strands. Here's our original strand on the outside, and this red color is our new strand. These orbs here are DNA polymerase, and they're just going to pull out different nitrogen bases from all outside here. They're just going to bring them in and match them to where they need to go to create a brand new strand. Okay. Every time your DNA replicates, there can be errors. Your cell will make mistakes known as mutations. Normally, the mutations are harmless, but over time, they can add up, and they can cause ailments like cancer. Um, but there are plenty beneficial mutations as well. Right? So that's the end of this lecture on DNA replication. Make sure you take the quiz, which is located on Edline, and I will see you in class.